Hi, I'm Alan Rabinowitz, host of Red Giant TV, here to tell you about Trap Code Particular 2, the new version of the awesome particle system for Adobe After Effects, available from Red Giant Software. This release is full of new features and improvements. For starters, particles now exhibit true 3D behavior, with support for rotation, scale, and motion in 3D space. Also, particles now react to light. In fact, Particular 2 supports multiple lights, which means that potentially every light in your scene can be used to illuminate your particles. And finally, by popular demand, a new streaklet particle type has been added to allow you to easily create the coveted iPod light streaks effect. These are just a few of the many new features in Particular 2. And best of all, if you act now, we'll also send you Trap Code Particular creator Petter Norby to do your work for you. Do you want to take a break now? Dude, it's break time when I say it's break time. Okay. He's not that good. Red Giant Software's Trap Code Particular 2, coming soon. Hey, our own Rabinowitz here for RedGiantTV.com. In this episode of Red Giant TV, we're going to look at a fast technique for building a cool 3D picture montage that can be used as a title sequence or interstitial. Showing us this simple yet effective technique is Rob Bernholz, a 30-year veteran in the video and post-production industry. Rob, who is owner of a company called Absolute Motion Graphics in Florida, has been using After Effects since version 1, if that helps put things in perspective. That's what I call experience. He usually does all of the post work on his projects, including editing, graphic design, effects, and animation. Rob is a true one-man band with an impressive client list, including T-Mobile, Walt Disney World, ESPN, Kodak, General Motors, The History Channel, Long John Silvers, KFC, Subway, and gosh, I'm suddenly really hungry. All right, so while I go out and get a sandwich, I'm gonna let Rob take over. Oh, and uh, just a note, Rob will be using Trap Code Particular. If you don't have it, you can download a free trial version from the Red Giant Software website so that you can follow along. All right, Rob, it's all about you. Hello, everybody. Rob Bernholz here of Absolute Motion Graphics in Orlando, Florida. And I have a technique uh, I want to share with you today uh, that I like to use, this effect, um, using Trap Code Particular and After Effects to manage large amounts of still assets uh, to create a very cool effect, very dynamic, and something that only takes 10 or 15 minutes to set up, uh, but can be used again and again when saved as a preset. Now, very often, my clients will come to me with a folder of uh, photographs, and they say, hey, we have all these stills, and see, these are from our latest employee shindig, or what we've done over the last years. We've uh, built up our new facility, and can you do something um, exciting with these? You know, something a little bit better than dropping them into iPhoto and letting a Ken Burns effect happen. The first thing that you want to do, of course, is we go to uh, After Effects and we start off with a new project. And uh, let's go ahead and start off by making a new composition. Uh, DV quality is fine. 20 seconds is a good length for our demo today. First thing we want to do is uh, add a new solid. The solid can be uh, any color, comp size, say OK. And to this we're going to add trap code particular. So let's go ahead and add particular. Now of course uh, you have to own particular to do this effect. Well that's not technically true. You can uh, download the free trial of particular, install it and do all this and render it out and uh, it'll have a big red X across it but perhaps that is exactly what you're looking for and then hey what a deal in the meantime what we're looking at here are the defaults of particular uh, just apply it hit your spacebar and it will emit particles from one point in space just shoots them out in all directions um, that's really great and I wish I could say we were done now but there are a few more steps involved so what we want to do is stop these particles from moving. The idea is going to be that we're going to replace all these little spheres that the default uses with a series of photographs. Let's uh, find a frame where there's plenty of particles filling the frame that's around four seconds works pretty good and moving into the particular control panel if we scroll down here to the physics section there is a heading here a listing called the physics time factor. 
Uh, the default is 1. Um, we're just going to click a keyframe for the physics time factor. But we want to freeze time. We're going to stop these particles from moving around. So let's, in our comp, advance one frame forward. I just page down and add another keyframe here by changing the value to 0. Physics time factor of 0. And what we've got are particles that move up until that point. So show the keyframes. We hit that point and they stop. That's exactly what we want to do. So let's go to that keyframe. I'm going to hit the uh, B key to set the beginning of a works area because uh, we're not really interested in any of the time prior to this keyframe, just from here forward. Our next step would be, uh, well, we want to add a few photographs. We have our client photos. So let's go to our uh, folder of photographs here. Now for this case, I've got a folder that I've collected uh, some rights-free images. Um, there's three dozen in this folder, and that's plenty for this effect. Although you could have 500, uh, three dozen is quite a few, as you'll see. So let's option drag this folder right into After Effects. That's a nice little tip, by the way. If you didn't know this, on the Mac, at the top of uh, every window, those little icons are just like the real file. Uh, on anywhere else on the desktop. So this folder is just like the real folder. So we option dragged it into After Effects. You always want to option drag something like that in. If you just dragged it in, After Effects would look at all the images in that folder and try to make an image sequence of them. Option drag, you get the actual uh, contents of the folder as a folder right there in your footage window. So Let's go ahead and, and use these things. Let's make a new composition. Name is Comp2, but let's change that. We're going to call that uh, Particle Particle Source Comp. Let's just say OK. And to that comp, we are going to take all of our photos and just drag them in. And there they are. I have 36 layers of photos, and it's a beautiful thing. What I would like to do, though, some of these photos here are larger than my frame. I want to scale them down because we need to see the entire photo. Some of them have been cropped in Photoshop previously. So with all of them selected, we're just going to scale them down to about there so that the entire image is not cut off by the edges of our uh, comp frame. When using custom particles, which is what we're going to create here, they need to be only one frame long and then sequenced in a timeline. So let's go ahead and set that up here. Let's just select all of our layers, move ahead to frame one, and uh, using the keyboard shortcut option right bracket, I'm just going to trim them. They didn't really disappear there. Let's just move in. There they are. They're now just one frame long each. And then while with them all still selected, Let's right click, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, and we'll sequence them. Make sure in the sequence layers dialog box it's not on overlap. That's unchecked. We click OK, and uh, we have all of our photos. There they are. Boom, 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 boom. One frame long, in sequence, perfect. Uh, let's do a little bit of housekeeping here just for the demo. I don't have enough images to fill out a 20 second comp, so we'll just trim the length of the comp to the length of the last layer. Let's go to its uh, out point and hit an end point for the end for the work area. Under composition, I'm just going to trim the comp to the work area, and now I have a comp containing just all of my photos. Let's go back to that first comp we set up, comp number one with the particular layer. Now we're going to get into the, uh, to the meat of this. What we want to do is make a few settings in particular. So highlight the layer, go to its effect. First things first, these particles need to become photographs. So let's go under particle. And right now the default is to a sphere, but we're going to make them custom particles and there is a choice for custom. Now note when I hit custom and select it from the pull down, this whole little sub menu here, custom, becomes 
ungrayed out. We can twirl it down and there's a couple settings here. The layer is the source. Where is our custom particle going to come from? My particle source comp, that's where they are all living. Let's drag that in. You can turn off its visibility. It's not even something has to be seen. Back in particular, the layer is the particle source comp. We get a warning here from particular that my particle layer size is too big. Um, but really that's not important right now. We know they're big. The next setting is the time sampling. What we want to choose is random still frame and it will make each random frame a new particle. So all those spheres have become uh, photographs. Of course they're very tiny right now so we need to uh, deal with that. Let's make their size a little bigger. The particle size in particular. Okay, then maybe even uh, randomize the size so they're all different. That's great. Of course they're all clumped together so we need to make another little tweak here. And that tweak is to the emitter. Right now, all these particles were emitted from one point in space. Instead of a point, let's make the emitter a box emitter. That way we can spread out where these photos were coming from, where the particles were coming from, on different axes, such as the emitter size on the x-axis. Let's make that really big and spread them out. Let's take the emitter size on the Y and spread those out. And my favorite, the emitter size on the Z, and really shoot these apart. And now we've got a lot of depth. Wonderful, we have uh, photographs here. Uh, they're all scattered in space. The cool part is now we'll animate this. So there's several ways to do that, but to keep it easy, let's just add a new camera. Say so, OK. One setting you want to make in the camera is to right click on it, go to the transform menu, and auto orient. Auto orient, turn auto orientation off. Okay. That will keep the camera always pointing in the same direction, even if we move it around from left to right uh, or forward or back, it won't swivel the camera. So let's reveal the camera's position properties by uh, clicking the P button. And if you see the X value here, I'm going to shift and scrub on it. Let's go to the left. You can see what we've already done is we have all these photos in space already scattered for us in a pretty dynamic way. And we can go all the way to say to the right, right there. Let's make a keyframe. And if we move ahead, say, um, 12 seconds or so, or 14 seconds, scrub all the way to the right till they pass all the way by, and do a RAM preview. And look at that. We've got a wonderful effect happening. Now, there are some tweaks you can do uh, for demo purposes here. I'm just showing you the basics. We can go back into the uh, particle source. Uh, one nice little quickie is add a composition layer, a uh, composition layer, an adjustment layer. And to the adjustment layer, let's add an effect. And that effect for now will be perspective bevel alpha. If I crank that up and see what will end up and crank the contrast up. We'll get a nice little perspective border around all the pictures. And that at least when they're overlapping, now we'll flip back to the other comp. There we go. So you'll see we have some separation in there as they overlap and they aren't just so flat. Okay, well that's pretty cool. So we can render that out and uh, make sure when you render it you render it to uh, lossless with alpha channel, which is animation, of course, millions of colors plus. We'll call it uh, flying photos L to R for left to right. That isn't all you can do with this effect. Rather than flying them left to right, which works pretty good, on the Z axis, let's pull way back. Yep. 
and uh, move over to where we have a whole bunch of particles and pictures in the front there. In fact, let's go way back. And at four seconds, let's add a position keyframe and maybe uh, six seconds forward. Let's take that Z axis, shift, scrub it all the way through. I'll make it a little adjustment so we don't fly into a picture and just keep going. So same thing, you can render that one out uh, with an alpha channel. Uh, and once you've rendered these, they render really fast. This entire thing will render in, in just seconds, even on my laptop. Um, if you want to save this effect, by the way, so you don't have to mess with those particular settings, say, ever again, um, just highlight the layer, highlight particular, under your animation menu in After Effects, save animation preset. And I could call that the uh, flying pictures effect. I would save it. Next time, all I have to do is a, make a new solid, call up that preset, apply it, it's done. Um, you do have to import your photos next time and trim them to one frame, sequence them, but that's it. After that, uh, you're all set to go. You would just hit render. So you can recreate this effect in probably three or four or five minutes at the most. So once we render it out, the next step is we'll go to Final Cut. Here in Final Cut, what I've done is uh, I just have a background. It's a digital juice background. I've changed its color and blurred it a little bit. I import my flying photos. This one was uh, pre-rendered from earlier. And there's my flying photos. Uh, all you need to do is drag it in. And um, let's put it over our background. Now this is photo JPEG and animation on my laptop so it won't play in real time but I'll scroll across it and look at that with the background looks tremendous. All you need to do is add say a fancy title there at the end and uh, hey we just happen to have a title here so I will add that. Let's trim it right there and as our pictures go by our title will fly in. There we go. And uh, all we need to do is render that, which I happen to have here. Let's click over to a pre-rendered version of that just to save some time. Let's play it. I don't have a soundtrack, but boy, you can just kind of hear one in your head here. Something very dramatic. Here are all our pictures flying by, given to us by our client. And in just a few minutes, we have the year in pictures. Probably 15 minutes total work on that. Just think, if I spent 17 minutes, it would look even better. 20 minutes, this thing could be winning a, an Emmy Award. Well, that's wishful thinking. If you need an option, of course, we have it with Z-Space. Let's add a little effect. There they are, flying through Z-Space. Beginning end, we fly in the title. Then we have the year and pictures. Not bad for something that you can knock out in, in just minutes. I hope this is a, an effect that you can use a whole lot. Um, I know it has been saving me for a long time, uh, especially when I get these things at four o'clock in the afternoon and they say, um, can you have something by five o'clock delivered? And I say, you know, no problem. This thing can be done in 15 minutes. So that's it. I'm Rob Bernholz. See you again next time. All right. Thanks, Rob. Simple, effective, and useful in any number of situations. The kind of thing you can actually get paid to do. That's my kind of tutorial. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, check out Rob's site at www.absolutemotiongraphics.com where you can see his client work and learn more about him. Don't have particular but wish you could try this for yourself? Well, don't fret. Like I said before, you can always download a trial version of particular to see what it's all about. And just for watching this tutorial, we're going to give you a discount on Trap Code Particular. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time sensitive discounts. They won't last forever. All coupon codes expire seven days from the launch date of each tutorial. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV deals. And by the way, if you buy Trap Code Particular now or bought it after April 7, 2009, you're eligible for a free upgrade to Particular 2 coming soon. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for redgianttv.com. See you next time.